Hello and welcome back to uh, Fellow Kite Trips. Today we are on Horsey Mere. Uh, beautiful morning. We started. I started early this morning because uh, there's a threat of a big storm coming in, uh, thunder and lightning potentially. So I was in the water by seven o'clock because it was clear and lovely. Um, basically parked at the famous Horsey wind pump mill and then uses a very short carry to the uh, to the small inlet here and then you paddle out into the Horsey Mere which is a beautiful big lake. The reason it's called a mere is um, in Norse times a large lake with, which is shallow was called a mere or a tarn so this is a large lake which is, is, is shallow. Anyway we're going to head across the mere before the storm comes in and then take the small river the name the name I don't know which we'll have to check that later it'll be down here um, up to Brograve Mill which is a lovely derelict mill um, and I hope the storm clouds will come in so we get some photographs of it in the storm um, and in some dramatic light but a gorgeous morning on Horsey Mere let's just enjoy this So there's actually uh, quite a wind on the mirror this morning, so the good thing is the paddle out will be hard, but the paddle back, as long as the wind doesn't change, uh, will be a lot easier. But it is so quiet, there's one lovely sailing boat on the mirror, there's these thatched boat houses, sporadically in, in the marshes, private boat houses, and all you hear is the ducks, the geese, and the, and the terns.
here we are at Brograve Mill um, and I have to say that's probably one of the most relaxing perfect paddles I've had in the Norfolk Broad so far highly recommend it uh, the paddle across the mere is beautiful it's windy there's a bit of a ripple in the water but it's so open and beautiful and when you do find the little waxum cut it is a beautiful little river but a little marsh cut as you saw the footage we got, or I got, um, and here we are at Brograve Mill with no one else around. And there's no, not stormy skies at the moment, which is a good thing in some ways for my paddling, but not a good thing for my photography. The thing about photography is you never really want clear blue skies, you want some drama in the sky, especially as a landscape photographer. Well, with the clouds you get that lovely dappled variation of lighting, which I love shooting in, so you get streams of light across one area and shadows in another area, which really makes the photograph three-dimensional. Now, um, I've had some questions from uh, some of my subscribers about how I get the photographs I get and what my technique is that I use, and I've tried to talk about this in other videos, but I've been interrupted, so here is a perfect time to do it. If you're not interested, fast forward now, but if you want to know my techniques, this is what I do. I shoot a kind of bracketing technique, but it's manual bracketing. I don't set my camera to bracket two stop, three stop, five stop, eight stop because I want to visually see what I'm getting in the viewfinder to really narrow down my, my range. Now the reason I shoot multiple shots is this. The naked eye can see the foreground here well lit, can see the middle ground well lit and in focus, I can see the distance in focus, but a camera can't do that. So what you do is you take a reading basically for your foreground, your middle ground and your background and then you take a photograph of each of those exposures. It's called stacking. And what happens is, you then stack those photographs together. You lay them on top of each other, but that's why you need a tripod, and you've got to keep it totally still, of course, because any movement will cause a blow when you put those three or four photographs, or five photographs, or sometimes six or seven photographs, on top of each other with a program I use called Infuse, which is designed by an English guy. He designed it years ago for a donation, if you wanted to donate to his uh, to his website. It's called Enfuse.com. I'll put it down, the link down below. It is a brilliant site which you can, you can use as a plugin in Lightroom or Photoshop. What you do is you select the photographs you want, you put it into Infuse, it works it all out, and it brings you one image of all those photographs stacked on top. So the draw of the kayak, I can come onto the bank where the actual uh, mill is, which is really hard to get to. So I've just paddled further upstream a bit because there's these amazing form, uh, storm clouds are appearing behind the mill. So I want to get up behind it and get a shot of the mill in front with these building storm clouds. There they are, and that's going to come in behind the mill. So I'm going to set up and get some shots when they're behind the mill or just framing the mill nicely. That was the plan today was to get the, the, um, the ruined mill with the storm clouds brewing behind it.
Anyway, it's been an amazing day, and then turn around and head back down the uh, the cut, the Waxham cut, uh, back into Horsey Mere, and hope the wind will take me home. So the uh, the threat rain has hit. Um, so we're coming back. The rain winds changed too, and so the wind is blowing in my face. Well, that was a that was a wet trip back across uh, Horsey Mere. Um, serious rain, a lot of wind, open water, but really beautiful and uh, worth it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of photo kayak trips uh, to Horsey Mill. Where is it? Horsey Mill there, but mainly to Brograve Mill. And join me on the next one. Thank you.